Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today we're going to take a look at what does Ketu want to say to us. So I've got the Ketu cards from the Vedic Astrology deck and we're going to draw one per group. Now today I've got objects for groups and the reason I have objects is because I was thinking about Ketu and how I want to do the cards and I thought well Ketu is all about well one of the things Ketu is about right is wisdom it's about you know in that place wherever our Ketu is in our chart we are usually quite experienced and we have usually attained a lot of knowledge or information possibly from past lifetimes in that area right so we're quite wise in that area and I thought what I would do, how I would structure the reading is that we would use oracle cards only. So I've got this enchanted map oracle, I've got this energy oracle cards, I've got what else do we have here, chakra wisdom oracle. So we don't have a deck to choose this time and what I thought we'd do is we could use these objects. And I looked around my place and I looked around my room and I thought right I'll just use these. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you what each of them are. This, well this is a little abacus, um, it's quite cute uh, and as I start the reading I'll tell you a little bit more about them so I just give you a light touch intro to these objects so this is a small abacus this is an angelite stone and I believe angelite is a stone of let me tell you I've got it up on my screen it says here it's really sweet it says angelite crystal is a lullaby of light and love and leaping to higher consciousness so isn't that a sweet little stone there and then we've got this ring here for group number three so feel free to choose whichever group you like as per the object this is group one group two or group three and I will see you in your reading hi there group one if you chose group number one or if you chose via this cute little abacus oh there we go so I'm not sure how you use these. I've never learnt how to do this. But my mum told me that, you see, she used to work in a bank. And she told me that some of her customers would actually come in with, I think it was like a, it looked like a calculator. It was a leather bound type thing. But inside there would be these little silver um, balls, you know, the abacus style of calculator and she said yeah some of her customers would come in with a real abacus and I just think that's so incredible so that is there for you now where where does that object come from why is that in my room well that's part of my keychain that I use over there in in the UK in England and yeah I just thought I'll take that off the off the set of keys and use that as an object today. Now we're going to do oracle cards only. This is a new kind of spread that I have never done. So let's see, let's see. And I should probably work in the meaning of the abacus as well. Well, I think, I mean, it's an ancient tool, right? It's an ancient tool. And I was inspired I bought this because I was shopping to buy an abacus like what my mum described her customers would use at the bank. So that's what I was looking for on the internet. And because um, I wanted to learn how to use an ancient tool, but I never, I ended up not finding what, what she was saying that I, you know, her customers would have. I couldn't find it, but I found this cheap little thing on eBay. <laughs> So, but it's an, it's an ancient tool. Maybe you are learning something. Maybe you were attracted to this because you appreciate ancient tools or you like to learn the art of something ancient, like, you know, like astrology or like tarot or maybe you're learning something um, of that nature. Or you're interested in things of the past or something along those lines. 
So maybe that's what brought you. Okay, I think we'll take one of these. That's what brought you here. And also for me, this is something that I haven't used for like three years. Like it's been on my keychain, which I used to, I used to use the keychain every day, obviously. And like for, yeah, what is it, three years I have, this is an object I haven't used. So maybe there's something, maybe there's a gift you haven't used, right? Maybe we could read that into the abacus. How interesting. Okay, so this is going to be a very unique spread. I haven't done anything like this before. So let's see what we end up with here. Okay. Right. Group number one. We've got Ketu in the second house. Okay. Recognizes there's more to life than money. Wealthy when young. Can rebuild if there are losses. Helps others grow spiritually. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really nice. Recognizes there's more to life than money. Now, if I remember correctly, this is stretching my mind a bit, but I think last week, group one, you did get some kind of Stuart Wilde message, I think at the end, that, that was along these lines. So this is good. This is good. Okay. Gentle gardener. Nice. All right. So this could be wealth and abundance because we started off talking about my mother's customers at the bank and how they would use an abacus. We've got Ketu in the second house. That's a, a classic wealth house where you're building wealth. You're building wealth for your family. Gentle gardener. So you are tending to your, your kingdom, your empire, right? So this is all good. strategy nice it says here journal log 21 we've got a feather here we've got a compass so you're possibly strategizing you're working out plans for the future might be up in your head quite a bit and that's fine most of us are you know that's that's what happens in this modern society of ours. And, and being up in a head, that can be like you're, being, you're on the computer all the time. You know, that's another expression of being up in the head, right? Aha, live in the moment, yes. Live in the moment, what you are looking for is with you. Fantastic, wow, that is incredible. I love the colors and it's like, perhaps this part of the journey you're really feeling Maybe you're feeling that the peak or what you want is far away or it's difficult to get to or live in the moment. What you are looking for is with you. It's And we could say within you as well. So the point that you are making your way to is within you. because it's all you. I know it's hard to live that way. I, I, I find it tricky to live that way myself. Interestingly, we've also got two, two, 21. Okay, that's the second house, so that's a two. Right. Self-acceptance, nice. So there are some very simple and elegant messages coming through about Accepting yourself, being grateful for what you have, being grateful for wherever you are on this journey. However far away you feel from achieving the goal or reaching that place where you want to get to, be grateful for where you are now. Because let's say, let's say you're here, you know, be grateful for being here and, and stop and turn around and take a look at the view from here right so wherever it is that you are in your journey i do think this is time to pause and reflect take stock see that you are doing very well let's have a look self-worth wow that's incredible 
because we basically got the same two cards here. I had a feeling this would happen, that from two totally different oracle decks we would get you know, a, a, a double like this. That's incredible. I did think this could happen and that is happening right here. Yeah, I think in order for you to ascend to that peak or that place where it is that you want to go, it's what's going to get you there is accepting yourself, is loving yourself, is recognizing your own worth, recognizing your own value. That, and this is also a gentle path Take it slowly, take it gently. Hmm. Shall we take some more cards? Let's see. Because we've only got oracle cards here. Oh, do you know what? We haven't taken one of these. Let's take one of these. It's an animal spirit. How cool. Let's see what animal spirit you get here. Oh, well, let's take it. You've got a zebra here. Okay. Let's take it. Zebra. 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 I don't know. It's a bit of a tomato, tomato type situation here. Um, I'm going to say zebra. I think that's probably the English way. Yeah, this is fascinating. Well, it's got quite an active third eye here, which is in full color. That's quite incredible. And I think we've, that's the symbol for Earth as well, I think. But it's amazing because the whole animal is kind of black and white, but then it's like this third eye here. And, and that's the thing, that within is where all the good stuff is. So this is all that money can't buy type stuff. You know, money can't buy integrity or class or... Um, money can't buy love, true love, right? You know, money can't buy so many things money can't buy. And that's the colored portion here, you know, that you, that's within. It's not in the outside world. Look at that. The outside world's pretty black and white. And the outside covering of this animal here is, is pretty black and white, isn't it? Whereas when you go within, that's where all the color is. And when you're within, then you're connected to everything as well. So you're connected to the peak, even while you're on your way up, you know. I'll tell you a really good um, guide to help take you within. His name is Kyle Cease. I'm pretty sure it's K-Y-L-E. Cease, C-E-A-S-E, -E -E, I think. I've been listening to some of his content. It is brilliant. And um, he can really help it change your perspective from being one that is, yeah, I want to use the word dependent because we've got dependence, independence on this line here. So it's like you're not dependent on the outside world for, um, for, confirmation of who you really are and all the good that you are and you know you don't need the outside world to confirm your worth or you know acceptance all your qualities they're within they're inherent they can never be taken away from you you know live in the moment your way to that world the within world right where you see and recognize all your own goodness the way to that is to be in the now is to be in the present moment okay so yeah i'm not i'm not doing a great job here of uh, explaining that within world i'm not doing a good job of it right now <laughs> but you can watch kyle sees is what i'm saying you see because that's the other thing about doing a k through reading it's like yeah we we are looking for guides guides guidance all that kind of thing is um, is important. I was almost going to start the Kethu reading with a quote, but then, yeah, today I ended up uh, just bringing the cards out and I'm a, I'm a bit short on time here. But let's take a look what's here because we've got terrific guides in our jar. 
Every dark story serves a purpose for us, but mostly a dark story hides us from our life purpose, which includes our happiness, but which we do not think we can accomplish. Perfect. This is an ideal quote for this spread because as you're going up this mountain, there's possibly some something or some things within you where you're thinking, I can't do this. And here Chuck Spezzano, the psychiatrist, is calling this a dark story. Every dark story serves a purpose for us, but mostly a dark story hides us from our life purpose. It does because the dark story makes you think you're not good enough. You can't do it. You don't have the resources. You don't, you know, all that negative stuff. That's a dark story that controls us, that controls our life. It tries to because it's trying to grow the ego. It's trying to feed the ego. It's trying to keep your light from shining, right? Your life purpose is what's in here, right, within. You close your eyes and your third eye opens. It's that kind of thing. And, and in that space, you know, you're very much in touch with your happiness and your love and your worth and your gifts and you know when you're just fully being you and you're happy and you're free you're free you know so if there's any doubt as you're on this mountain you know you're making your way to the top you've got to see the doubt for what it is that that's just a dark story and that doesn't have the power to to prevent you from making it to this place. And look at that, what's at the top here? It's a massive spark of light. It's kind of an explosion of light. That's where you are, you're free, you're being you, you're just shining brighter than ever and nothing's stopping you. That's the goal. It's really important we get the goal right, you see, and that's the strategy card here. You know, you, you wanna make sure that your goal is uh, the right one. What do we have here? You have a divine right to choose whom you will play with and under what circumstances. By eliminating any energy drag, the positive good things in your life will resonate faster and faster. Yes, absolutely. And look at that as you ascend up this mountain, you know, fewer people can join you because the path will narrow, there's less room, there's less space. You've got to be careful about, yeah, who's coming up here with you because it's not, you know, down here there's room for a thousand people, but up here there's room, you know, possibly just for yourself and a handful of close people, right? So you definitely have a divine right to choose whom you will play with and under what circumstances. See, and sometimes because we're conditioned and we're on the 2-8 line here of family, codependence, other people, there's a lot of stuff going on here on this line. So you might have been conditioned to, that you don't, you're not exercising this divine right. You might be conditioned in such a way where you think, oh, but I can't tell them no, you know, but you can. All right, you can say no. Let's take a look at one more. And then I think it's going to cut out. Absolutely, this is a great one. You're the only one. Oh, hang on. Is it going to? There we go. You're the only one who can decide what's best for you. Yes, you're the only one. Other people can give you, other people can give you ideas. Uh, you can be inspired by other people, you know, um, you can get advice from people, but you're running the show. And that's, that's something that only you do, only you can decide, right? And that's where you've got to put people in their place as well, all right? And I, I say this to my clients. I say to my clients, you know, put me in my place, right? I'm just your advisor. I'm not, you know, you're at the top, you're running the show. You know, you're just listening to me for some information, but then you need to use your intuition to determine, okay, what bits of information that she's saying do I need? Do I need all of this? Do I need one or two pieces? What, you know, that only you can do that. 
right so you need to be in charge at all times all right well guys this has been such a good reading let me know how you got on in the comments below i would love to hear from you and i look forward to seeing you next time hi there group two if you chose group number two or this beautiful angel light now this is an angel light palm stone so you're supposed to sit with these and I, I suppose you're supposed to buy two of them I just bought one but you can meditate with these and this was my traveling stone so now what did I read out here I said it's a lullaby of light and love and leaping to higher consciousness it says here this is one of those stones that simply oozes spirituality and healing okay so this is a beautiful stone now I bought this uh, on just before I flew out here to Sydney Australia to be at the family home and now I'll be returning back to England but I got this as my traveling stone and it came with me and it brought me a lot of comfort on my journey and so it will now give me a lot of comfort on my journey back so let's see what meanings do we have there well we're already talking about travel isn't it so maybe if you picked this group there's something connected in here maybe with travel um, yeah it's also angelite so there's something about well there's something definitely about healing there's something about going to higher consciousness and you know sometimes I mean if you become a really good meditator you can go places I'm not at that level of meditation yet I'm not particularly um, going anywhere but I do have do you know I do have these times where I'm contemplating and I'm getting like downloads of information or ideas or uh, yeah I, I can uh, that that thing is happening for me which is nice but again it doesn't happen all the time um, it's just now and then but yeah it's quite interesting so like when I did that troubleshooting series that thing was just I was kind of that was like dictation that was pretty amazing I used to go to this same cafe which I have hardly been there in the last gosh yeah in the last few I don't know two three months I've never been back there and I was going to this one particular cafe and like it was like dictation it was just like the content was coming and I'm just writing it down going, oh wow that's a good idea and <laughs> you know so that kind of thing does happen my i must admit i haven't been meditating that much lately um because i've just been doing lots of work okay i'll take one of these and i've got yeah i've got a whole bunch of bookings that have come in as well which is great so thank you to everybody who has booked uh okay let's begin here Aha, uh -huh. Ketu in the 10th. Faces many obstacles in career. Later in life, career less important. Achievement comes at the cost of home or home life, yeah. Highly insightful, talented artist. Yes, I do often see that these people uh, make great artists for sure. And yeah, there will be obstacles in career or, or times where career can be a bit stop start. Pretty sure sometimes they say Ketu can be like Mars, and Mars sometimes, especially a sort of eighth house Scorpio Mars, that can be a bit of stop start type energy. Action. Oh, okay, interesting. Well, there's some contrast right there. So, on the one hand, we've got, you know, because sometimes I notice when I've had like Ketu transiting my 10th house, work slows or you know the possibility to get new work when you've got say for example Ketu going through the 10th house sometimes it's good to keep your job during a transit like this because that job will likely stay but it will be from my experience it will be hard for you to get new work when Ketu is transiting 10th uh, yeah so that that's kind of interesting there but then we've got action here and we've got a number eight and interestingly I was talking about when Mars is you know having something to do with the eighth 
house there. Okay, interesting. Got a few things going on already. Mountain. All right. Wow, we just had a mountain uh, in the other group. Okay, so we've got a mountain here. Let's take a look. Number six. Ooh, silencing the mind. Let silence guide you to your inner peace. Wow. And that's very key through like this card. That's amazing. So too is the mountain. The mount this mountain card has a bit of a Ketu vibe as well. Renewal. Oh, wonderful. Okay, this is great. Yes, I'm loving this. Retreat. <laughs> wow. Okay. The reason I'm laughing is because it's kind of like it, there's this feeling of up, down, up, down, up, down here. Hummingbird. Oh, how beautiful. And I'm pretty sure someone in the comments one time mentioned the fact that the hummingbird, now is this correct? They can actually like, they can reverse, they can fly in reverse. Is that correct? I think there's a thing there. Beautiful. Well, it's like, this is what you are, the renewal is going to, you are becoming this kind of multi-talented, can go in any direction. It's like, yeah, this multi-talented person can go in any direction. Whatever direction you choose, you will be successful at, all this kind of thing. So your renewal process that you're currently in right now, you are going to birth this hummingbird. You're going to be this, okay? So, but we've got a bit of time here in which there's a nice, space I think that you're in right now or that you need to create for yourself right now if you're not in it right now you need some form of space and because we've got this stone here as well this stone is and this is the stone that helped me when I was completely like just knocked out burnt out yeah it was like this but that portion of my life was just key doing the 10th it was like I can't do career, you know, um, yeah, and yet we've got an action card here, and I think the order does need to change, because I think action, you'll know, okay, and you will know when the action is needed, you will be guided, and you'll be shown, but you've got to silence your mind, so next steps Let's have a look here. Retreat. Next steps will be shown to you in the silence. You're going to need a time. And I would say this is now, ideally now. You know, you've got to carve out some time where you are, you're in silence. You need quiet time. Because, and that's the thing, you're tuning into a reading like this. So you want to know next steps. You want to know, well, what do I do? Possibly, <laughs> right? That might be one of the reasons why you click on the reading to find out, okay, what, what guidance, what signs, what symbols, what do I need to know? What do I need to do next? And I think for you, actually, your guidance is very much the actions are going to be shown to you. So you're going to be shown in a very clear way what it is that you need to do. And sometimes, and I know this whole thing that sometimes the, the frustration of asking for guidance and you feel like there's nothing, and it's like, well, I, I don't know what to do. Well, so the, there's some, because sometimes the, the guidance is do nothing or just wait. And that can be a frustrating place to be in. And it'll, own, it'll be frustrating if you've got some anxieties or, and the anxieties are around, am I doing enough? Am I missing something? Am I being lazy? You know, I know because I have had all these anxieties. And now I just know, okay, I, I, I don't need to do anything because, you know, life, life definitely does, will show, it'll show you. When you're busy, you're busy. There's no doubt about it. There's no question about it, you know. When you're needed on the playing field of life, You'll be told. You'll be out there. You'll be doing what you need to be doing. And right now, 
it feels like you need to you need a retreat space you need rest you need to silence the mind very very important and in that stillness ideas will come you'll be shown um, it, and I'm glad I had that experience of doing the troubleshooting series because yeah that, that was pretty amazing like that that whole thing just came in you know I didn't have to all oh, these are off camera I didn't have to um, I didn't have to do very much at all and, and it was every weekend um, so the Monday before I recorded the, I was just told what to say and I, it was taking dictation I was taking dictation and like it was so easy and it was so effortless and now if I I don't have the energy or the you know this week I haven't had many um, client sessions I've been very lucky somebody did get in somebody got a half hour spot that I didn't close off and I, I just thought I probably know when to book it and then boom it got booked I was like okay and uh, but I so I've had a low reading week this week right and I thought to myself oh I'll do lots of videos I'll do this I'll do that and you know and I haven't I haven't done anything I had a to-do list with all these things written I haven't done a thing I just don't have the energy but I've seen myself that when a piece of work wants to come through like an entire what was that a nine-part series I did the energy came the ideas came the words came the concepts came like everything came so that's the thing it will all come if maybe you need to be silent maybe you need quiet time retreat time and trust that the new will come in and you'll be shown the exact actions you'll be shown what to do you really will and it's but you've got to silence the mind first really it, it will it will all come in it's just about silencing the mind yeah okay so yeah this week I, I haven't had as much in a you know my to-do list I haven't touched it really but um, but that's okay because every now and then we just need time you know to catch up on other things as well uh, okay so each moment of our life we either invoke or destroy our dreams wow we call upon it to become a fact or we cancel our previous instructions amazing and see if you meditate or reflect on this right now it's kind of like I'm getting the phrase here yeah, the machine needs to be switched off if you switch off the machine that's this silencing the mind you know when you power back up again yeah it's like software all the all the instructions will come in you know but see if we're invoking or destroying our dreams that's a lot of energy expense yeah maybe there's something about the time that you're in right now that has been energetically expensive or emotionally expensive because see if we were to see the Rahu position here Rahu is in the fourth house of home so that's the north node that's where you need to go you need to be at home you need and this mountain you know you might need some cave time um, oh and it's so interesting that yeah because this I bought in England when I was in my place and I call my apartment it's like a sky cave because like yeah, it's an apartment like but it's you know a few floors up kind of thing so I call it my sky cave like yeah and that's kind of what this is here it's like you need some cave time it's like you need to yeah and be by yourself definitely amazing okay so let's have a look at this but look at that the renewal is coming and you're going to be this action you'll be told exactly what to do your intuition will tell you it will guide you and we know this we know when you know we, we're out and we're going to eat some ridiculous thing and our intuition's going no don't do that and but we do it anyway <laughs> right so your intuition is talking to you all the time <laughs> it's even telling you what to eat all right uh it takes a constant effort of mind to avoid the abundance that life offers naturally isn't that amazing so what happens if you switch off the machine this effort is not being expended right or you're not um oh this is fantastic 
So what's going to happen when you switch off the machine? This abundance just has to come in. Oh, this is a great quote here. Wow, this is so perfect. It takes a constant effort of mind to avoid the abundance that life offers naturally. It does. It takes a constant effort of mind to have lots of problems, to have lack, to have... How is all of that sustained? It's sustained through mind, you see, because that has nothing to do with love and abundance. And love and abundance just naturally wants to come in. Love and abundance is nature. It's, you know, how, there's so much rain, there's so much, you know, all the um, seeds that grow from the ground, it just does that automatically. Life is coming through all the time. God is coming through all the time, right? Life is God, is love, is, you know, all the, all the good. The force of good is constantly coming through. You know, every time you breathe, every time you want a breath of air, it's there for you. Like that abundance is it's just huge. So in the similar way, we can see that like so with money as well. I remember a long time ago, I had a, a session with a psychic and she said to me, and this line has always um, really impacted me. She said, you need to allow money to just be there for you. And that was just such a simple line, but I've reflected on it so many times for years. And that's a great statement because, yeah, just allow it to be there. Like breathing, I trust that the next breath is there. So I need to feel that same way about money and ideas and goodness and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, amazing, guys. Well, group number two, I am wishing you well. Let, let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and... I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group three. If you chose group number three or this beautiful ring. Now this is a real deal sapphire ring. I'll show you. It's absolutely incredible. Let's see if we can focus in on it. So this ring actually belonged to my father. And you can see here, I don't know, but to me, this is a sapphire and it looks incredibly flawless and uh, again I have no idea like about stones and look at that look at, it doesn't even fit my thumb how amazing but my dad had a lot of astrological knowledge um, that I I didn't know he was such a good uh, yeah he, he had a gift for astrology I didn't know he had that though until you know after he after he left the earth plane so um yeah and i would say that this would have been astrologically determined this one and i remember always this ring and the other one he wore it was emerald and that was a beautiful beautiful ring so those of you who chose this ring and now you see that we don't mum and i we do wear it but as a like we just put this and we put it around our neck so it's a, it's a necklace ring or it's a ring or so there's lots of meanings here. There's also a sapphire here. So we're honoring Saturn. Um, what other meanings? So maybe Saturn is present in this reading. Uh, let's see what meanings come. I don't know, but I just wanted, I just thought it'd be really cool to film it. I hope my mum doesn't mind. I think she'll be okay with it. <laughs> She even said, oh, you can take it with you. But I'm like, no, I'm not going to take it. It's too precious. I don't want to take something like that. It's, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's way safer here. <laughs> but what other meanings have we got? So this is a ring. This is also, well, there's a connection with father as well um it's one for protection right uh or that like or that you work with the planet in a well in a in an effortless way I think. Oh, let's have a look shuffle properly by the way guys i haven't been putting any of the cards back in this time i should have said that in the other two readings but i didn't 
because they're all unique one-off original cards this time okay let's see what comes nope okay there we go have one of these all oracle whoops all oracle cards today which is it has been good i like using just the oracle cards it's a lot of fun very light and easy reading but it's interesting i was thinking the readings would be shorter or quicker because i'm only using oracles but no nope. <laughs> nope it's not any quicker okay let's take one of these Ooh. Oh, it's a little deer. Let's take it. Okay. Oh, Mrikshira. <laughs> Anyone got some uh, Mrikshira Nakshatra? All right, let's take a look. Let's see what we've got going on here. Ketu in the fifth. All right, distance from partner or children. Later in life becomes spiritual, has mastered creativity, becomes a humanitarian. Yes, because Rahu, of course, is in the 11th. Okay, it's also gains and all that kind of thing as well. And we've got a ring here, right? Gains, <laughs> jewels. Actually, there's a um, brilliant stockbroker guy who somehow ended up with a giant bag full of sapphires. And yeah, I thought he's definitely running this 511 line uh, it's amazing how sometimes you can hear things about and also I think he called he titled his book taming the lion as well so we've got Leo the lion like you can very often work out important aspects of a person's astrology even without seeing the chart like yeah that's something that happens all right goddess of the moon okay fantastic goddess of the moon details details right possibly working quite hard interesting you've got this is a bit similar to group one there's this kind of compass type thing details details lots of pages planning thinking open mind replace the old cycle with a new and exciting one fantastic Gosh, and doesn't that look like an eye there? That's interesting. Okay. Joy. Oh, beautiful. Great card. She looks like she's having a good time. Again, we've got the gold and the dark blue. We've got the 511 axes. That's amazing. And look at all these colors. It's kind of like golden colors and dark blue and we've got gold and we've got blue <laughs> yeah that's amazing and that's the 511 that's pretty amazing okay this is great right there's a clear theme here balance okay good like it and the deer oh this is great well what can i see here well i think group number three I think all you have to do is just maintain some balance in your life and there's some like mm, it's like there's a gift or something there's like the next level up is here for you uh joy it's like and i think whatever hardships or maybe it has been hard or it's been difficult but it's like you are coming to I think it's good. Yeah, you're kind of. Well, we have Ketu here in the house of the sun. I was going to say you're going into the sun. But we've got Ketu here. This is the place where you have been. I think you're headed in, in here to. Yes, it's Saturn, but this is hopes, dreams and wishes. This is abundance, prosperity. 
This is the deer. Okay, we had Mrikshira, the deer that seeks beauty. And you seek beauty, you, you chose a ring. So I think this is wonderful. I think you've got something really good coming up or coming in. Replace the old cycle with a new and exciting one. Let's shuffle on that. I haven't shuffled for anyone else. I'm actually going to, how are we doing for time? I think we're okay. I'm, oh, why don't I use this? What do we, what, replace the old cycle with a new and exciting one. So let's get one card for the old cycle. So let's get a card for the old cycle and let's get a card for the new cycle. So shuffling for the old cycle, okay. And we want one for the new cycle. All right. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Well, again, it's repeated. It's like Mrikshira. It's Taurus. It's moon in Taurus, isn't it? That is Mrikshira. I'm pretty sure I've got this right. Yeah, <laughs> I should know this. <laughs> Let's have a look here. So this is like abundance. It's love. It's that moon in the second is beautiful. Okay. That's like an exalted moon. That's great childhood it's great food it's love it's beauty it's all the wonderful things right so you're coming up to that this, we shuffled this for the new cycle okay so what you've got coming in is and look at that because when i was looking at this goddess of the moon i was thinking of a kind of taurus moon type situation right so and that's here right moon in the second i was thinking rigshira i was thinking taurus this could also be i think rohini as well right um, so yeah, goddess of the moon. So this is like, we're looking at the best kind of moon situation here. So this is a real gift. So that's great. Where, and as I said, where are you, what's the old cycle? Okay. We've got, well, this is a pretty stunning old cycle. Actually, <laughs> this is Venus in the 11th mega wealthy has many luxuries, loves partner, friends, and children form strong alliances with people who take a stand is sensitive the old cycle do you know this is an interesting interpretation i'm going to say that perhaps your goals have changed a little bit and perhaps when you were young what you aimed for in life or what you wanted and maybe you thought to attain like the height of luxuries or Maybe that was the big goal, but I feel like the new cycle in your life is, 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 is still very good, but it's like um, you've shift, you shifted your priorities a bit and what you want out of life is you actually want, because I'm seeing yeah, a really good family. You want a good family life, that that matters more to you than perhaps what used to matter to you yeah I, I keep coming up to this concept it's been I was thinking about it quite a lot this morning about when our goals change or getting the right goal and as I've been working with some of you guys and helping you because uh, on email you know after a session sometimes a little bit of coaching work that I do and with one of you I recently emailed you and it was about working out what is the right goal for you and I think this is really quite lovely because I think this is a thing of maturing mind you I mean this is a very good card and this is a very good old cycle but I'm seeing it in the context I think it's in the context of dreams and what it is that you want for yourself and for your life and I think what you want is let's see I don't think I read this one so moon in the second house has a large family good childhood money obtained through women ups and downs in relationship with spouse artistic soft-spoken spends on pleasure yeah that's true <laughs> so these aren't vastly different but there's something more stable I think about what you want you want stability you want a good family life you want an open mind as well Taurus moon is a good moon to have because 
you will the mind is quite clear and quite free and we do have this this stone this when i look at this stone when you see it in certain light and you really look deeply into it let's see if we can see it's really quite flawless like it, it is really quite extraordinary this stone and i think this was really brilliant for my for my dad i think it was a really good stone for him because he wore it like all the time this is great energy group three i'm just loving all of this you are the deer that seeks beauty you've got a lot of love a lot of abundance a lot of stability coming in for you now i think maybe your goals have changed a little bit but i think that's in a good way let's have a look here what does kate do want to say as master creativity becomes a humanitarian yes again so we've got rahu here in in the 11th i also think this is a time where you are you will need to pursue gains you'll need to work you'll need to pursue gains we've got details details here there is work to do you have to be balanced about it don't overwork but there is work to do in terms of grounding you know getting the abundance grounding it um, but it's good this is good this is just such good energy wow <laughs> really impressed group three this is great so anyone who chose this you've chosen a lovely thing here and uh, it's definitely a massive sign saying a lot of abundance is waiting for you. It's, it's wanting to come in. Okay, so it's just balance will be key. So don't overwork. Equally, don't underwork either. And you'll know intuitively what that is for you. And if you've, got, if you've always got a tendency to like overwork, then yeah, you probably do need to rest. Let's see what we've got in here. You will come to realize that your relationship and your happiness come from what you give rather than what you try to get. Chuck Spitzano, yeah, absolutely. And I th and that, that these two cards being here, this Venus in the 11th and this um, moon in the second, I mean, you've got such an abundance to give, right? You've got, in terms of inner riches, okay? So you've got a huge amount within that you can give and just give that and a lot more abundance is going to come right back in. So that's great. And yeah, Lester Levinson did talk about this. He talked about the fact that when he was loving, those were the memories that were the best in his life. And I think that's really profound. Give up your grievances and your guilt, and you can have all the abundance you deserve, which is more than you can imagine. Wow, that's huge because that's what these two cards i mean venus in the look at that venus in the 11th mega wealthy i mean that's the business you know <laughs> and this is zoella sug has this uh venus it's in capricorn she's got a couple of other things there but i mean whoa you should see the life it's spectacular what she's doing so yeah give up your grievances and your guilt and you can have all the abundance you deserve you deserve which is more than you can imagine what you deserve is more than you can imagine that it's just that in itself is a mind-blowing concept like yeah we can't conceive actually of what we deserve and how good we are deep within everybody is right so this is the thing because everybody has some spark of God within them. It's just with some people, the ego is so thick and is clouding the spark, right? So that's ego is all the guilt and the grievances. So we give up the ego and then it's just that little spark of God, right? That is just shining brightly. This is amazing, group number three. This is a beautiful reading. I sense all kinds of wonderful things are coming in for you. Don't worry if it doesn't feel like it, if you feel like 
you know, when, where, I don't see it. It's okay, it'll come, it'll come, balance, right? And go slow, take your time. You are the deer that seeks beauty. If all you do, look at those eyes, if all you do is seek beauty and seek the good stuff, that's what you're going to find. That's what you're going to stumble upon. So keep seeking out the good in the world, in yourself, in other people. And that's what you'll be surrounded by. So group number three, thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to know how you got on in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.